Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new Racer Micro FED camera from Runcam. In this video I'm going to go over its features, measure its latency, head out doors and compare it side by side with the Runcam Micro Sparrow 2, the Cadex Tubo Micro SDR2 and the Foxeer Preto Micro V2. After this comparison I'm going to mount it on my Tomoquad's side winder and head out doors and take it for a test flight. The Runcam Racer is available in two versions, so you can either get a PAL or an NTC version. In addition, the aspect ratio is configurable, so you can either set it through the OSD to 16x9 or 4x3, and it comes only with one lens option, which is 2.1mm. Inside the box, we're getting the Runcam Racer Micro FEV camera, and in addition, we're also getting this bag of accessories that contains some spacers and screws, a harness, a mountain bracket, and also this micro to mini FEV camera adapter. So this is the Runcam Racer. As you can see, it features an enclosed case, which should provide us with more durability. In addition, it features a 700 TV line CMOS sensor that supports wide dynamic range. As I mentioned before, by default, it comes with a 2.1 mm lens, and you need to choose where to get an NTSC or PAL version. I've got the PAL version. And for its OSD, you can set the aspect ratio between 4x3 and 16x9. On the back, we can find a single connector. The left pin is the volt in, the walk-in voltage is between 5 to 36 volts, then we've got the ground, video in, VBAT plus, and then the TX and the RX. So just like the Runcar Microsoft 3, this camera supports camera control, so that's why we didn't get any OSD controller inside its box. All you have to do is to make sure that you're running Betaflight 3.3 or above, and you'll need to connect the TX and the RX to a free UART port, and then you'll be able to configure the camera using a remote controller. In terms of weight, the Racer weighs 5.22 grams, so it's a little bit heavier than the Runca Micro Spera 2, which has pretty similar specification, which weighs 4.72 grams. In addition, the dimension of the back part of the camera is the standard 19 by 19 millimeters, and the distance between the back part of the camera to the front of the lens is about 18.1 millimeters. The advertised Latency is 6 milliseconds, so now I'm going to test it out. So what I've done, I filmed an FEV screen that was directly connected to the camera and I turned off the light. I shot the video at 240 frames per second, which means that every frame is about 4 milliseconds. So you can see after turning off the light, we can still see some light on the FEV screen because of the camera latency, but after a single frame, the screen is completely dark, which means that the latency is between 4 to 8 milliseconds, so Runcam are pretty accurate on their description, and this camera has an excellent latency. So now I replace the Runcam Micro Swift 3 with the Racer on the Tomoquats side window. It's already connected to a free UART port and it's also configured on Betaflight. You have to make sure that under peripherals to choose Runcom device and in addition you have to be running at least Betaflight 3.3. In order to activate the camera mode, you have to put the throttle on central position and then you have to tilt it to the right. Now we can see remote mode is set. Tilting the throttle to the right is going to confirm your selection and also change it and the navigation is done using the right stick. So accessing the menu is done by tilting the throttle stick to the right. Then we can adjust the picture again by tilting the throttle to the right. We can navigate using the right stick. So you can turn on and off the flip. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, sharpness, you and the color gain. You can also adjust the white balance and you can set the language between English, Deutsch, French, Russian, Portuguese, Spanish and Chinese. You can also perform a camera reset and you can exit the menu with or without saving the options. In addition, you can access another camera menu by holding the pitch to the top. Uh, now we can set the camera call name, you can set the voltage alarm, you can choose whether you want to display the call name and also adjust its position. I'm going to turn all these options to off. You can switch the sharp view between on and off. I'm not sure what it does, but I'm going to leave it on. And finally, you can also switch between widescreen, and now it's on, and now it's off. By default, it's off, and you can also set it to on. So they don't call it 16 by 9, they call it widescreen, but I assume that widescreen is similar proportion to 16 by 9. In order to exit the remote mode, you will have to make sure that the throttle is at central position, and then you will need to tilt it to the left. 
The next thing that I'm going to do is to head outdoors and compare these four micro FEV cameras side by side in different lighting situations. As for the FEV video, it's going to be posted in the next few days, so stay tuned. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye. it all